Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of Working with PHP. In this episode, we are going to learn how to handle form submissions. Now, in I think it was episode 7 of Web Design Basics, we worked on a basic form. So I've just written one right here. It has a username field, a password field, and a login button. Very simple form. It has a text field, a password field, and a submit button. That's all. And right now, this form isn't going to do anything. It's actually just going to reload the current page when I click on it. So today, we're going to actually have it be handled. And we're going to use PHP, obviously, to do that. So we're going to make it so that when I hit that Submit button, it will send off all of the data to the submit.php file right here. And in here is where we can, you know, handle it. So, first thing that we're going to do is we need to give these things names. Uh, name is one of the attributes that can go with an input, and you need to have a name. This is kind of like how we identify. So, in this case, for the username, we're going to say that the name is username. If you don't have a name set, that piece of data won't be sent. So, if I didn't have this right here, then this whole thing would be ignored when I press that submit button. So it's, in, it's important to name all of the things that you want. Now this submit button, all we do is just click it to submit the form. I'm not going to give that a name because I don't care about it, but I do care about the username and password. So you want to give them a name that you can easily tell, and I'll show you how we're going to use those names in a second. So now we need to set up the form so that it actually works correctly. There are two attributes that we need to add to form. There is the method attribute and there is also the action attribute. So let's start with method. There are two different options for method. There are post and get. So here's the difference. When you send a get request, all of the data is shown in the URL. So for example, if I send a get request, it may be you know, form.html question mark username is equal to uh, pogo and no, sorry, and password is equal to password or you know whatever the information is. So when I do a get request, that is um, it will actually show all of the data up at the top in the URL. In some cases, this can be useful. And most of the time, when you're working with a form, you're going to use post but you get will be useful in other cases. So if you ever have a URL open and you see a question mark and then a bunch of, you know, something equals something and something equals something and something equals something, that is a get request, and each of these are parameters. So the name is username, the value is pogo, the name is password, and the value is password. So um, that is get. But in this case, we're handling secure information, and we'd rather not have that show up in the URL bar. So we're going to use the post method. Post means that the data is sent, but it doesn't show up in the bar. So all you'll see would be something like form.html, but all that data will still be there. It'll just be hidden, and the user won't see it, but of course we'll be able to see it in our PHP code. Then finally, we just need the action. This is what's going to happen with this. And the action is going to be submit.php. So when I hit that submit button, it's going to take all of the important data and head it over to submit.php and give it. So if I reload this and I hit login, one second, you'll see it just took it to submit.php. And it's empty because that file's empty. So let's actually go ahead and put something in it. Now, in the last episode of Working with PHP, we talked about arrays, and I said that arrays are particularly important in PHP because there are a bunch of global arrays, and we're going to use the post-global array. To access it, you do dollar sign underscore, and you'll see there are a bunch of arrays. The one that we want to use is post. Now, post is an array that contains all of the post data, and remember we said everything has a name. So if the name is username, the value is whatever's inside of that username field. So we're going to use the index. So post at index username is whatever the user typed into the username text field. So I could go ahead and say something like dollar sign username is equal to dollar sign underscore post username. And then I could say password is equal to post at index password. Since I named this 
password, the name is password there, the index password will be whatever I typed in there. And if we want to echo, we could just uh, echo out um, username and then username password password and this should be a dollar sign. So this will, all this will do is it'll take the username and the password from the post request and then it'll echo out the username and the password. So let's try this. Let's say that our username is Pogo and our password is Pass, P-A-S-S. -S. I hit login and it says username Pogo, password Pass. Now you'll notice that when I hit submit it took us to submit.php and you'll also notice that when I was talking about that get stuff with the question mark and everything like that, you'll notice that there is no question mark. All the data is not visible in the URL. However, it is still there. It's just hidden because it's a post request. You'll see that we assign username, the variable username, to post at index username, which is exactly what I typed in. So let's change it. Let's say I type in pogo 29 and password12 you'll see that exactly what I type in shows up. The username as pogostick29 and the password as password12. So that is how you handle uh, forms. Again, we choose our method. In this case, we're going to say post because it does contain secure information. And we're going to submit this to the submit.php file. We named the fields that we care about, the username and password fields. So now whenever I hit that submit button, it's going to take us over here. I'm going to grab the username and password, and it'll echo it out. One last thing to quickly show you. Let's say that we do want to try using get. I'm going to change the method there to be get. And obviously, here, we're going to use the get array, not post. And now let's see what happens. So I'm going to reload this, and let's say I use pogo and password. I hit login, and the exact same thing happens. I'm using the get method, so everything here is sent as a get request, and here I get everything from the get array, and I you know, print it out. But if we look at the URL now, it's submit.php, username equals pogo, and password equals password. So now this data is actually inside of the um, URL. The username being the key for username, and then it's equal to pogo is what I typed in, and then password is equal to password. So if you want to have it visible in the URL bar, as you do sometimes, um, you would use get, but otherwise we want to use post because this is secure information and we don't need it to show up in the menu bar or in the URL for any reason. So that's all for this video. That's how you take a form, and remember you can have any type of um, input in here as long as you give it a name and you put it inside of this form tag, uh, and then when you press the submit button, when you have something of type submit, it's you know automatically the submit button. So when you press that submit button, it'll take all of the data, send it off to submit.php, and it'll put it inside of the post array or the get array, depending on which method you chose. In this case, we said post, puts it under post, and now we can handle it. Now I could, of course, make this an HTML uh, page, with just a little bit of PHP inside of it, but in this case I just wanted to show an example. In the next episode we are going to do logging in. So we obviously have a username and password set up, uh, form set up, and then we can get the information, but we want to actually save this information to make it accessible in other files, and then also that if I close out of the page and open it later, my data should still be there. And that's not terribly hard, but that's what we're going to do next. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button, and I'll see you guys soon with some more coding. Bye for now.